Right, so today we are looking at arguably the most explosive Kitchen Nightmares episode of all time. This one features 63-year-old Sammy, who is an ex-Playboy millionaire, 40-year-old Amy, his delusional and spectacularly unhinged partner, and their now infamous restaurant, Amy's Baking Company, which is based in Scottsdale, Arizona. With the restaurant's reputation plummeting due to waves of negative reviews, the business is hemorrhaging money. So they have called upon the help of world famous chef and restaurant tycoon Gordon Ramsay in the hope that he can bring in changes and turn the restaurant around. The night before Gordon arrives, the camera crew are already set up, allowing us to witness how the restaurant operates on a normal night, or at least normal by Amy's baking company standards. Approximately two years ago, these reviewers and these bloggers decided to make up lies and say that they ate the food and it was disgusting. And we lost a tremendous amount of business because of it. So this, essentially, is what the whole episode revolves around. Amy's inability to take criticism. This makes the nature of Gordon Ramsay's visit, in their eyes at least, a little bit different to usual. Rather than realising they're in trouble and seeking Gordon's help to try and fix their problems, which is what all the other restaurant owners on this show do, Sammy and Amy are seeking validation from Gordon that the critics are wrong and that their delusions of running a great restaurant with quality food and good customer service reflect reality. Chef Ramsay is coming to tell the people how the food is good here. If anyone tell me that my wife's food is not good, I just tell him to leave the restaurant, I don't want him and don't come back. Is your first time? Last time. And last time, don't come back, madam. So already, it's not hard to figure out why they're losing so much business, is it? If you tell every single person that has a complaint about the food to leave and never come back, you're going to run out of local custom pretty quickly, especially given the quality of the food in this restaurant, which we'll get onto. But also, everyone else, whether local or visiting, is going to hear about these experiences through word of mouth or online reviews, and not even bother trying the restaurant in the first place. And for those who catch Sammy on a good day and don't get kicked out for their complaints, they still end up on the receiving end of petty and patronizing responses like this. What is wrong with it? Yeah, the egg is. Okay, if you came to eat to enjoy, then you should know what you like to eat, sir. Apparently you don't know what you like to eat. I guess not. <laughs> It's like they run their restaurant with the motto, the customer is always wrong. And what's even wilder is not only do they often disagree with customers to their faces, but they also regularly go a step further and punish them for daring to speak up. I hope he eats it, and I just made it really spicy for him. I hope it hurts him. You have to be pretty sick in the head to tamper with a customer's food just because they complained about it. But to do it on camera and admit it out loud is actually insane. Like, does she not realise that this behaviour alone is enough to tank the public's perception of her business? Who's going to want to eat at a restaurant knowing that the head chef has no problem messing with a customer's food? I'm glad she's being like this despite knowing that she's on camera so we can see just how unhinged she really is. Okay, Amy. What? Two beasts is not cooked enough. Put it again in the, in the, in the oven. Sure, I'll burn it okay, for them. Okay, this is not cooked enough. Amy's nuts. I am going to really hurt somebody if they send back my cake. Crikey, with the knives in the back, that is an ominous shot. It's actually a miracle she hasn't been jailed for any of this yet, let alone had the restaurant shut down. And to add to the restaurant's problems, it's not just the food that's bad either. Because the kitchen's way too small for the number of items on the menu, Amy often does only one ticket at a time. So many customers end up waiting well over an hour to receive their food. We're not making any of this until I get to that ticket. You can take this back too. You didn't like it? Not good. Okay. I've never waited this long for one pizza. Understandably, the customers waiting often become frustrated. But just like complaints about the quality of the food, complaints about the time that it takes to come out of the kitchen are readily dismissed by Amy and Sammy too. And often, they even mock those daring to make them. We're waiting on one pizza. It's coming now, it's coming now, now. You keep saying that, you've been saying that for an hour. Look at him, he's like, where's my pizza? <laughs> really? Send him home! How are they this outraged at a customer paying for food and expecting it in a reasonable time frame? They've been running a restaurant for six years now too. Surely they've come to realise that this is pretty standard. But for whatever reason, they haven't. And this time, with the customer really challenging him over it, Sammy absolutely loses it. You want to wait, you wait. You don't want to pay what did you have and you fuck up from here. Do you understand? You fuck yourself. Go out, you motherfucker. It would be hard to believe what you had just seen, wouldn't it? With all the cameras around, you'd think you were being pranked. 
Like this was all some outrageous skit for a TV show or a YouTube channel. And amazingly, it gets worse. The two guys waiting for the pizza genuinely get kicked out. And after yelling abuse at them as they left, Amy storms back towards the kitchen and addresses the entire restaurant floor on her way. You are a little pansy. Get Amy, out of here. Don't come back. Give me a break. This is, you guys, I make excellent food. You motherfuckers, you all think that you can come in here and say these things. Are you kidding me? This is ridiculous. Ridiculous indeed. Well, after that meltdown, Sammy and Amy shut the kitchen, kick everyone out, and call it a night. The day after, Gordon arrives to start the first stage of the process, diagnosing the issues. To give you an idea of the type of things their customers were saying at the time, here are a few reviews from Yelp. I've thrown up better pizza. This pizza is just bland and awful and should not be sold to anyone who is not currently in prison. I never write reviews about any place I've ever gone to, but I feel like I have to. Right when my family and I walked in, we were met with rude service. My wife's ABC house salad had a hair in it and Amy accused us of working for the media and putting it in the salad. The hair was blonde and my family all has black hair. And it gets worse from there. My son ordered a pizza and it was cold and the cheese wasn't even melted all the way. Never go here. Don't waste your time or your money. I hate leaving bad reviews, but I want people to be warned about this place. I went to complain to the owner over the phone about the restaurant regarding my margarita pizza, but I was threatened with restraining orders and told to f off by Amy herself. I was also accused of not being real slash being a competitor. I hope she gets her head out of the microwave and stops being so defensive about her bad food. However, rather than letting the reviews or the reputation of the restaurant speak for themselves or watching the clips from the previous night, Gordon wants to find out for himself. So naturally, the first place he starts is by asking Sammy and Amy. And of course, Amy blames the trolls. There's a lot of online bullies and haters. We stand up to them and I think we're the only ones that ever have as restaurant owners. And they come and they try to attack us and say horrible what? things that are not true. Because they're, they're used to eating processed wood chips, not from us. Okay. Um... It's become quite clear already that these two, and Amy in particular, have a real victimhood complex. They make it sound as if the whole world is against them, and there seems to be no middle ground where at least some of the criticism sent their way is at all valid. I actually really dislike people who aren't mature enough to take individual responsibility for things and try to blame everything and everyone else for their problems. But at the same time, I really enjoy watching delusional and entitled people get a good grounding. I just hope Gordon gives them the grounding they deserve and the grounding that he's capable of delivering them. I also definitely like watching absolutely unhinged people in a kind of morbid curiosity way. And these two are about as unhinged as it gets. Do you have children? Well, we have three little boys, but they're trapped inside wow. cat bodies. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're cats. Meeting you two for the first time, you are both fucking nuts. <laughs> I know. Meow, 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 meow. I'd say I feel bad for whatever Sammy got himself into, but not only is he almost as bad as her, but the red flags were very much there for him to see. Amy pressured him into marrying her just five months into the relationship, and apparently it's been a roller coaster 10 years since then. Anyway, you can tell that Gordon knows that there's no smoke without fire. So suspecting that there may be some truth behind the tsunami of scathing reviews, he begins to inspect the restaurant. This is usually the part where he discovers moldy storage containers, out of date food, raw and cooked foods being stored next to each other, and a whole host of other health code violations. But to his surprise, Amy's kitchen is actually flawless. Everything in it is clean, ordered, dated, labeled, and stored properly. This then, however, begs the question, if the kitchen isn't the problem, then what is? So entertaining Amy's theory, Gordon asks her when the problem of online trolls began. She tells him that over two and a half years ago, a customer wrote an online review claiming that their pizza was frozen and unable to control herself, Amy responded. You wrote back to him. Oh, yeah. Right. Well, Why? He, I told him I thought he was a loser. He was a moron. No, I no, didn't insulted take him. him. I Tell understand me. he insulted yeah. me first and I attacked back. She is just nuts. You cannot have an ego that fragile in this world, especially in the age of the internet. Like no one is gonna read that review and have Amy's response change their mind. Maybe if she had detailed how the pizza was handmade or said that none of the ingredients were frozen and that he was welcome to come and inspect their food storage or even just apologize and offered a free meal in return, the whole thing could have been fine. But that would have required Amy to acknowledge the fact that her food isn't perfect, which is something that she's entirely unable to do. I need people 
who respect you, who know that you have earned your stripes in the kitchen and in life. I need them to listen to you and not the online bullies and take your word that you're saying that our food is good. And that just confirms exactly what we thought after Sammy said pretty much the exact same thing. They don't want help identifying and fixing their problems. They want confirmation of their delusion that there are no problems in the first place. Ramsey's visit isn't to save their restaurant in their eyes, it's to save their pride and ego. For him to figure out if their food is good and it isn't the problem here though, he needs to try it himself. So first up, he orders a fig and pear prosciutto pizza, but when it arrives, he isn't too pleased. That is so sweet, but that's not the issue. The issue is the dough is raw. It's just, I feel it, it's raw, it's doughy. So not a good start. The quality was clearly disappointing, but what made it even worse was the fact that it took over an hour and a half to come. So Gordon sends the soggy and overly sweet pizza back, but when Amy asks Sammy what was wrong with it, he tells her it was fine. You didn't even tell her the dough was- Not yet. I know my wife, she's, she'll get nervous. You're scared of telling her the truth? Do you want to tell her? Come with me, you tell her. I just want her to know, so she checks okay, the next she one. she will know, yes, she will know. Apparently sometimes when Amy takes criticism, it causes her to start shaking and she gets up and says, that's it, I'm leaving. As a result, Sammy rarely ever passes on customer complaints. And especially with the extra pressure on this service with Gordon being there, he doesn't want to risk ruining it. Instead, he tells Amy to relax, to do everything she would usually do, and that they would discuss the comments after. Next up, Chef Ramsay orders a blue ribbon burger medium rare, but once again, Amy disappoints. Oh dear. That is one shit burger. Oh, it's a disaster. It was too greasy, it wasn't cooked medium rare as requested, and the mix of blue cheese, mushrooms, garlic aioli, white truffle oil, and crispy bacon bits, a combination Amy came up with herself, just doesn't work. But once again, rather than the food being taken back to Amy so that she knows what's wrong with it, it's chucked straight in the bin while she cooks his next dish, red pepper ravioli. Oh, mess. It has to be one of the most confused ravioli dishes I've ever seen and tasted in my entire life. Wow. The mix of bacon and sweet corn give the dish a confusing flavour, and according to Gordon, it smells weird too. To top things off, the reason he ordered the ravioli in the first place was because Sammy told him that it was homemade. But when Sammy checks in and Gordon questions him again, Sammy admits that it's actually store-bought. Hoping that the meal can still somewhat be salvaged, Gordon tries the final dish he ordered, the salmon burger. It's overcooked. I mean, it's, it's not good. It is like eating dry cat food. This was evidently an incredibly disappointing start, and Gordon is now very much aware that the kitchen is indeed a problem. However, whilst eating, Gordon discovered something even more disturbing than Amy's lack of culinary skills. As he usually does, Gordon speaks to the waiting staff to find out some inside info, and what Miranda tells him shocks him. Good tips? I don't make tips. Say that again. I make hourly. Serious? So where do the tips go? The owner. Yeah. In the UK this would be horrendous, but in the US it's even worse. The minimum cash wage there for waiting staff is just $2.13 an hour. And with tips included, the minimum is just $7.25 an hour. Obviously given they don't get tips, they're going to be topped up to at least the $7.25 an hour. But given the way Sammy and Amy talk, I doubt they're going to be paying them any more than they're legally required to. You yeah. cannot take service tips. Then bring me the people who's going to do their job and I don't have to interfere, they can take the whole tips for them. How can he even try and justify this? Even going by his logic, he should at least allocate them a percentage of the tips based on the percentage of the work that they do. So like if he does half of their job for them, then he keeps half of the tips. But like I said, that's just going off his logic. He should be paying them the full tips anyway. I mean, the customers aren't leaving the tips for him or the restaurant. They're leaving them for the waiting staff. Anyway, with four underwhelming dishes out of four, Gordon has seen enough. He tells Amy that he was disappointed with the quality of the food and how long it took to come out, but that he'll save the details for later. For now, he's just gonna go home, get changed, and come back in the evening to see how the place functions for dinner service. On his way out, he tips Miranda right in front of Amy's face. That's for you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. 
you can tell that Amy just wanted to dump tackle her right there and then for having the audacity to accept the tip and keep it for herself. She knows that that's a middle finger right to her face. Honestly, if Miranda had a heart attack there and then, there is no doubt in my mind that Amy would sit back and watch before prying the tip out of Miranda's cold, dead hands. Anyway, Gordon comes back at 6.30pm and heads straight for the kitchen. Explaining how things work there, Amy tells him that her assistant makes the salads and the sides and that she makes the mains. Unprompted, she brags that people tell her that her pizzas are the best pizzas they've ever eaten. And without hesitation, Gordon tells her that his was undercooked. I don't think your pizza was undercooked. I checked it when I took it out of the oven just like I do every other pizza. And to me, it was crispy on the bottom. So to me, it wasn't okay, wrong. Okay, so that's your version because you sure. didn't see it come back. And that is pretty much the case with every complaint he has, and indeed every complaint that every customer has. Because the food that gets taken back to the kitchen just gets chucked straight in the bin, she doesn't have the opportunity to check the food and validate any of the complaints. And because the vast majority of the complaints go to Sammy, who refuses to pass them on to Amy, she's able to maintain the delusion that everyone loves her food. The bun for the beef burger was soggy as anything. I have never had a problem with that hamburger, ever. Because your husband doesn't tell you. It is just crazy. She has a world-renowned chef who owns a restaurant group that's been awarded 16 Michelin stars that she invited to help her failing restaurant, telling her that there's an item on the menu that has a mix of ingredients that don't go together, and she's just completely dismissing it. It's like nothing goes in with her. And the, the salmon burger was like a salmon fish cake in between a dry bun. It's good like that. We have people tell us all the time there that you it's go again. good. There's no point in me saying anything to you because you just don't wear it's good like that. Whatever. It's like she's beyond help. And next, she reveals that not only are the ravioli store-bought rather than homemade, but that they're also actually frozen. Gordon tells her to take it off the menu if she doesn't have time to make it properly, and she just responds saying, sure, why don't I take everything off the menu then? She even says that he shouldn't criticise them before trying them, but he tells her that he did try them, and that he said that they were disgusting, but that the message just never got passed on. People usually love it. I've never had a problem with it, People but... People usually love it. Yes, real customers, not haters. Traviolis that are in the freezer. Oh my God, sacrilegious. I mean, she really should have done her homework on this one. Selling frozen food and claiming that it's fresh is about as close to sacrilegious as you can get with Gordon Ramsay. Food is sacred to him, so freezing it is sacrilege. So despite Amy's protests, he goes out onto the restaurant floor and tells the customers that he's 86ing the whole thing, which essentially means that he's taking it off the menu. While addressing the customers, Gordon also wants to know how they feel about the fact that Sammy takes the tips for himself. Don't no. with me. Yeah, I will f with you. Yeah. Who the f you think you are? I'm getting sick and tired of your bullshit. Well, then fucking answer my question. Tell the customers they're gonna get yeah. their tips. No, they don't. I love the guy's face at the end of this. That is literally exactly how I looked watching this through the first time. I also love how Sammy calls himself the gangster, despite being too afraid to tell his wife that her food sucks. Although, to be fair, he does actually have a criminal record with drug and extortion charges, and he's banned from visiting France and Germany. Anyway, part of the reason Sammy gives for taking their tips is that he does a fair amount of their work for them, but that's actually largely due to the fact that he doesn't trust them with full responsibilities. For example, despite many of them having used the system for putting through orders in previous jobs, Sammy insists on doing it all himself. And what makes this even more confusing is that he's not even that good at it, because he often makes mistakes. They should have uh, a pasta rustica. No, I don't have it. You didn't give it to me. Yeah. Sammy, I did write it down for you. I see you did, yeah. It's okay. Another issue they have is the number of staff they go through. Gordon went to speak to two former employees and one of them said that they saw 50 people come and go in their year and a half at the restaurant. The other former staff member recounted the time when Sammy forced him to wash his car when he was on the clock. Obviously not many people are willing to work under these conditions so staff often quit and when they don't, Amy's short temper often leads to staff being fired for the most minor of offenses. 4B, no no 5B, are you sure? You don't need to question me, Katie. You can go home right now. Sammy? Yes, darling. I would appreciate it if you would send Katie home right no. now. So Amy goes back into the kitchen, but she just can't let it go. The criticism she took from Gordon Ramsay about her cooking skills was getting under her skin and eating her alive. Everything was so clearly boiling up inside of her, so not long after, she closes the kitchen and once again tells Katie to go home. Katie! 
Listen to me when I'm speaking to you. Do not walk away from me. You don't work here anymore, okay? Don't start crying. Don't you cry. Why, why no, are you behaving like this? No, 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 oh my no, no, no. god! Come on. I am no, not. not surprised at all that she wants to quit. Working in customer service, having to deal with the general public is stressful enough as it is. But imagine also having to put up with Amy as your boss, Sammy as your boss and coworker on the floor, and not even making tips. There is just no amount of money that they'd be willing to pay that would make me want to put up with this. She doesn't work here anymore. She's a poisonous little viper and I don't allow people to have an attitude in my restaurant. What does she know? Who the hell is she? She is gone. That's who she is. Just when you think Amy couldn't get any worse, she adds hypocrite to her long list of undesirable personality traits. How is she of all people gonna accuse someone else of being poisonous and rude? Has she really got that little self-awareness? There was a slight bit of cheek in Katie's question, but it was so clearly in jest. Only an ego as fragile as Amy's could be this rattled by something so irrelevant. Well, after that despicable show of insecurity and classlessness, they close the restaurant for the evening and everyone goes home. The day after, Gordon returns to deliver his scathing review to Sammy and Amy, well aware that his harsh truths will likely not sit well with either of them. I told you about the burger, you refused to listen. I did not, I Every asked time you I what you was something. wrong with it. You said the salmon burger was dry, but it was wet. Is it dry or is it wet? Which one is it? One I'm at a time. Confused. The beef burger was wet, the salmon burger was dry. You can tell that she's been thinking about this, can't you? Rather than taking in any of his comments, she sat there and pondered his inconsistencies for a gotcha moment so that she can completely dismiss all of his criticisms all over again. But the way you screamed at that young girl last night. Do you think we're going to let someone hold a gun to our head and we're going to give them our ass and let them do anything they want from us? All she asked is, No, she did it with sure? an attitude. Hold a gun to your head and let them do anything. The gaslighting here is crazy. Can you imagine being married to this person? Everything you say that could possibly be construed as criticism would be thrown back in your face. And if you did something wrong, oh my goodness, it would be like the world has ended. It's just madness. And her denial of reality doesn't stop there. You're saying that I have fired 50 staff since Jessica Both of you. was here. You're saying that? I am. Can you prove that to me? She was wrong. 100 or even more than 100. So yeah, the 100. stats are actually worse than yeah. she told me. It's so annoying how she denies everything that comes her way. I'm glad Sammy was there to back Gordon up this time. And to be fair, he's kind of got to be on Gordon's side a little bit here. He's invested over a million dollars into this business and it is tanking. He can't afford to lie about their problems and pretend like nothing's wrong. Don't get me wrong, I'm sure he wants to back his wife to some degree, but he's doing this for the both of them. If the restaurant goes under, she suffers too. You verbally insulted me yesterday and I held my I tongue out truth. of class. I didn't tell you the truth. I didn't Why say you nasty you? things to you. Really? Okay, really, I didn't really. This has the exact same energy of those X Factor contestants that say you sing and I'll judge you to Simon Cowell after they've made a noise closely resembling a cat being strangled to an Adele song. She called him in here to review her food honestly and that's exactly what he has done. That being said though, there is a part of me that would love to hear all of the insults that she has bubbling away in her mind being unleashed at Gordon. Half because I'm merely curious, but half because I just know that Gordon isn't going to sit there and take it without fighting back. You convince yourself that everything you cook, touch, send, is perfect. Can I show you reviews that Not are from real customers? On the again. No, good reviews, real customers that have supported us Just for six years. Yeah, I want to meet these customers and see what's wrong with them too. What kind of crack are they selling on the streets of Arizona to make people want to come back and regularly dine at this place? Maybe it's like Karen's Diner. Have you guys heard of this? It's a restaurant where all of the staff are purposefully rude and dismissive of all of the customers and people go there for the shock entertainment value. That's the only reason I can think of for someone wanting to actively dine at Amy's baking company having been there before. Just the absolutely absurd experience of it all. You told me to be honest about the problems that you've had, that you cannot talk to your wife, that she can't take criticism before yeah, I met her. That's fine, I have no problem saying that. That's fine. Wow. I think you're too far gone. She is so smug it's unreal. The only criticism she's happy to hear is that her husband is too afraid to tell her the truth to her face. It's probably not even criticism to her, it's probably what she wants to hear. She was too far gone the day she was born. Then let's end the show. You think I'm too far gone? There's no hope. Yala, yala. It's Christmas. Let's go home. Why would he want to continue? Obviously it's all for TV, but Gordon really is here to help them. He saved plenty of restaurants in far worse shape than this one, and I'm sure he knows what needs to be done, 
But why would he want to? Why bother putting in the effort to help them if they're just gonna put up a fight? And why would he want to see such loathsome and contemptible cretins succeed? You have the right to run the business the way you want to run your business. I have the right to do the right thing. And the right thing for me is to get out of it. Good luck. Yeah, they are gonna need it. They have messed up what could be their final lifeline. And the worst part is that Sammy and Amy don't even realize it. They couldn't care less that they're still losing customers and that their business is going under. All they care about is the fact that they won the ego war by getting him to back down. We don't need his help. Maybe he knows that. And now he's gone, he walked away. He'll go on with his life. Sammy and I will go on with our life. It's like she's completely forgotten why he came in the first place. She said he's someone who's earned his stripes in the kitchen and in life, and that she was desperate for his approval. But now he's refused to give it to her, she's acting like she doesn't care that he's validating everything she's in denial about. And she says they'll both go on with their lives, but that's not a win for her. I mean, it certainly is for Gordon. He's walking away with footage for one of the wildest reality TV episodes of all time. But she's going back to running a restaurant with tanking views, a declining customer base, and that's hemorrhaging money that they just don't have. Whatever changes I would have made, they were never gonna stick to them. And that's why I've decided to do something I've never done before. It's such a shame. So after Gordon left, Amy actually tried to stop the episode from going live. On this final day of filming, she told the producers that she didn't want to participate in the show anymore. And the day after, she wrote to them saying that she didn't want the episode to be aired. Unfortunately for her, it was too late. Apparently on the night it aired, she crawled under her bed and watching it back made her want to die. I was completely shocked and mortified, she later said. They portrayed us as being defensive, combative, they made it seem like I couldn't take any kind of criticism. Like Sammy didn't know what he was doing in the front. Sammy followed up by telling reporters they wanted to do this for the drama. Amy went on to claim that the show had manufactured issues in the restaurant by misplacing ingredients and sabotaging the point of sale system so the orders couldn't be processed or sent to the kitchen. Although that doesn't exactly explain the poor or undercooked food or the poor face-to-face -face customer service, or even the delays that she was clearly working on, like the pizza that the guys were waiting an hour for. Unsurprisingly, after quickly becoming the most viral Kitchen Nightmares episode of all time, Amy's baking company became infamous on the internet. Memes flooded social media, the restaurant's pages were inundated with trolls, and people began showing up at the restaurant as if it were a tourist attraction. A year later, Gordon Ramsay sent one of his reporters, Anna Garcia, back to the restaurant to find out how they've been getting on. Despite initially refusing to talk to the cameras, claiming that Gordon had set them up and that they were horribly misrepresented on the show, Amy couldn't resist the urge to have a rant at the camera and explain some of her actions. I'm not delusional, I'm not crazy. Yes, we are passionate, yes, we are wild. If I came after you, you would probably stand up too. If I came after anybody else, you would defend yourself, wouldn't you? If you have a family, wouldn't you defend it? Unfortunately, they've been having to do a lot more defending since the show aired. Having seen how dramatically Amy reacts to critics, some actual trolls have been visiting the restaurant to provoke Amy and incite a reaction. People come here to try to set us up because they think it's funny because they have a hard on for Gordon Ramsay. Apparently one time they had a customer who they caught on camera come in, order something, place a fake cockroach on their plate and then leave without paying. Not all of the customers coming in having seen the show are trolls though. According to Amy at least, some customers who saw the madness unfold on TV come in and are pleasantly surprised at the food and service they receive at the restaurant. When they come in, they look at us like they are real and they almost pass out. And then they sit down and they try our food mm -hmm. and they see who we are as people and they say, I can't believe it. It's amazing. Your food's incredible. How did this ever happen? Are we being punked? Whether that's true or not, I really don't know. She seemed to think that everyone loved her food the first time around and that was pure delusion. So I wouldn't be surprised if the same thing is going on here. Still, the majority of the impact the show had on the restaurant appears to be negative. And just like with their first ever troll, Sammy and Amy have been fighting back against the hate that they've been receiving online. Although they claim that a lot of the insults targeting customers that were posted from the official Facebook page were originally from a hacker, they admit that all of the insults posted since they regained control of the page have indeed been them. Now we are, because now you have lit the fire inside of us. Now when we're calling people little trolls and telling them that they have no balls, yes, that's us. Just so you can get an idea of the type of stuff they were writing, here's a post on the Facebook page that Amy wrote. Most of you are fat, disgusting losers. 
probably none of the Redditors on this page even have a job or make over 40k a year. Most of your icons show you to be fat, overweight losers with nothing in your lives but disgusting people. My husband and I, however, enjoy the finest champagne and caviar whenever we so choose. We are beautiful people and we have parties with people you can't even lick their boots. You are disgusting pig people made from the slime of your own hatred at the world for making you disgusting people. Stay in the basement where you belong, Redditors. You are losers. Sammy also wrote a post hitting back at trolls, saying to all of the Yelpers and Redditors, bring it on. You are just pussies, come to Arizona. You are weaker than my wife and weaker than me. Come to my business, say it to my face, man to man. My wife is a jewel in the desert, you are just trash. Reddits and Yelpers just working together to bring us down. Pathetic. And one other post, which I think was written by Sammy, said, you people are all shit. Yelp shit, Reddit shit, every shit. Come to here, I will fucking show you all. A woman responded, commenting, are you taking reservations for lunch tomorrow? And I believe it was Amy that replied with, we don't let slutty bitches like you here. Ultimately, to promote her delusions to delusions of grandeur, Amy not only believes that she's in the right for how she responds to negativity, but she also believes that she's the perfect role model for every restaurant that deals with haters, trolls, and people who don't like soggy pizza. We have to show the world and every single business owner out there that you have to stand up and it's up to us to stay strong and to show our true product and what we really have to offer here at Amy's Baby Company. <laughs> Unsurprisingly, just a year after this interview, they sold the restaurant. Perhaps they just couldn't afford to keep losing money and couldn't turn the ship around alone. To make matters worse for the couple, three years after selling, Sammy was deported following a 10 year battle with immigration. The pair, however, now live in Israel and claim that in their new home, life is honey. Also, Amy hasn't given up her love of food entirely. To this day, she's still posting photos and videos to Instagram and TikTok of her baking, and appears to be earning a living from her Amazon shop. They also briefly had a merchandise store cashing in on their time on the show, selling caps and t-shirts with phrases like, I'm the gangster, I survived Amy's baking company, I speak feline meow, and here's your pizza, go fuck yourself. Looking back, Amy now says that she's grown from the experience, but reminds everyone not to believe everything they see on the internet, adding that even sugar looks like salt on camera. And so concludes what is for me one of the wildest reality TV episodes and stories of all time. I really hope you enjoyed this as much as I did and if so please feel free to subscribe down below for more videos just like this one. Thank you for watching and hopefully I'll see you on the next one. Bye for now.